All right, guys, welcome to Casa de Plisak. We're gonna do a little experiment today. Um, and so before we go over what we're gonna be doing, I wanna go through uh, the procedures with you guys a little bit. I also want to kind of go over what the experiment's about in general and what we're gonna be doing in terms of data collection. So first of all, right now, you guys are gonna be uh, doing your lab report on Google Doc. It's posted on Google Classroom right now. Um, and anything highlighted in yellow is a section that you need to complete. And so it's pretty much like our normal labs. You're gonna have uh, you know, a question, you're gonna have experimental design, evidence, um, and some post-lab questions. And so I've highlighted everything in yellow that you need to do. So you should be watching this first though, obviously, to kind of get an idea about what this experiment's about. What we're gonna be looking at today is the greenhouse effect, okay? We're gonna look at it through two different activities. The first activity we're gonna do is we're gonna look to see um, how the greenhouse effect affects uh, rising temperatures. And so to do that, what we do is we have uh, different bottles here. I've got a clear bottle with a thermometer hanging inside of it. I've got another bottle here with black construction paper around it. I've also got a stand here with a thermometer hanging out that does not have any atmosphere around it at all. And what you're gonna do, or what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna place these bottles around this incandescent light bulb, this 200 watt incandescent light bulb, kind of like this. And every five minutes, I'm gonna record the temperature and we're gonna see, does the temperature increase at a faster rate for, for this bottle right here, for example, that's got the black paper on it versus this clear bottle or one that has no atmosphere around it at all, okay? And again, you wanna look at this first page of your lab report because there's this experiment overview that goes over the science behind this and then you should be able to make a pretty good prediction about what's gonna happen there. In the second part of the experiment, we're gonna be looking at different sources of carbon dioxide, which is the number one um, greenhouse gas that we normally think of when we think of climate change. Um, I've collected three different sources of um, gases, okay? And the first one is I hooked up a balloon to my exhaust on my truck. So this is uh, inflated from the exhaust pipe. I've also got some pure CO2 balloons. I'm gonna use bigger ones when we get to the experiment. But this is CO2 or carbon dioxide that was generated directly from a reaction of sodium bicarbonate, which is basically baking soda, and acetic acid, which is vinegar. The other balloon, let me grab it real quick, is breath. Okay, I've been just blew this one up myself. We do exhale CO2, um, but we don't just exhale CO2. We actually exhale a number of different gases. Remember, for every breath that you take in, four out of every five molecules is actually nitrogen. And you don't metabolize that. So it usually is exhaled again, along with some CO2 that's generated inside of your bloodstream. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these gases and we're gonna bubble them into this solution. Okay, it's gonna bring it up to you guys. I've got them labeled already, one that says breath, I've got one that says exhaust, and one that says CO2. I've also got one that says control, okay? And so these are indicator solutions. What's gonna happen is as CO2 reacts with the water in here, it's gonna form carbonic acid. And this was talked about in your lab handout as well. Well, carbonic acid does not last very long in that normal form. It actually breaks apart again. So you have CO2 reacting with water, it forms carbonic acid, and then it breaks apart into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Well, hydrogen ions make things very acidic. And so what's gonna happen is this blue indicator solution will actually turn yellow if it's becoming more and more acidic. So the more hydrogen ions that are produced, uh, the more yellow this would get. And that's usually an indicator of the amount of CO2, okay? The more carbonic acid that forms had to have come from the source that had more CO2 in it, okay? We're gonna do a little reaction afterwards. We're gonna add some NaOH to it. NaOH is a base. It's basically gonna get us back to this blue color. So we're gonna see how many drops of NaOH it takes to get back to the blue color. If it takes very few drops, that means there was not a lot of carbonic acid in here. If it takes a lot of NaOH, it means there was quite a bit of carbonic acid in there. All right, so that's the basic idea of the experiment. Um, and so what I want you guys to do is read through the experimental design part, the first page or background, come up with a question that we're going to be investigating today. And that question needs to incorporate both parts of the experiment, the greenhouse effect with the bottles and the thermometers, 
and also the sources of CO2 that we're going to bubble from these balloons into this solution, and we're going to see the color changes that come from a result of that. Okay. Um, now, just so you guys know some more specific details for your experimental design, you'll see it in the time lapse video that I made. Each of these thermometers was placed around this light bulb in part one, 15 centimeters apart. Okay, and I recorded the temperature uh, every five minutes. Okay, I made a time lapse video that's only 40 seconds, so you have to watch 20 minutes of a light shining on a bottle. That would be ridiculous. Um, but um, this is basically the setup. I actually have it, you know, I'm going to be setting it up in the corner of my kitchen over there, and then I'll have that video set up on it. That's really basically the only idea for the experiment setup. And then again, like I said, I already collected the sources for part two of CO2. I hooked up. Um, a funnel to my exhaust pipe with a balloon on the end of it and blew up the balloon on the exhaust pipe of my truck. Please don't ever try that. That was stupid. My neighbor was actually looking at me really weird and asked if I was okay. Um, the breath, okay, just exhaled with this balloon. CO2, um, I had to make multiples of these and I'll make another one for the video, but I just put a balloon over a bottle that had some vinegar and some baking soda in it. It made a lot of CO2, the balloon inflated, I tied it off and I labeled it CO2. I'm gonna hook these balloons up to a straw and I'm gonna bubble the solution, uh, bubble the um, gas from the balloon into these solutions with the blue. The control is gonna stay blue so that we can always compare these three to our control to see how acidic it might be and how to get back to that blue color like I mentioned earlier when we add the NaOH to it. So that's it for the experimental design part. Um, you should have enough information from this video to be able to write your question, your experimental design, and then we're going to watch the evidence videos in a little bit here to fill in our data tables. All right, have fun today. Uh, I wish we were doing this obviously in the classroom, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, but I hope you guys are enjoying a virtual lab and a little change of pace. So I just bubbled into the breath um, labeled container, as you can see here, this balloon, okay? This balloon was inflated with, just I blew it up myself, tied it to the straw, and I bubbled it in. Now if you look, um, we compare the color to the control, you can see that it's like a, a greenish, like a teal or greenish as opposed to the blue that it once was. Remember, the more yellow this solution turns, the more carbonic acid has formed in there. So my breath actually um, had some, a decent amount of CO2 in it. Remember that carbonic acid breaks apart and it um, releases some hydrogen ions and that's what makes it acidic. So we'll put this off to the side for now. The next one up that we're gonna do is gonna be the pure CO2. Okay, this was CO2 that was gonna be generated from a chemical reaction between uh, sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda, and acetic acid, which is vinegar. So I'll bubble this in, um, and then we'll see what the results show in just a minute. All right, so I'm bubbling in the last of the CO2, and as you can see, the color is drastically different than what we saw with the breath sample, okay? And I'm gonna hold it up to the control, but you can see that the indicator has now turned this really pale yellow. Again, compared to our control, which is what the indicator looked like before the experiment, um, you can see there's a, obviously a huge amount of carbonic acid that forms, which makes sense, right? Because that balloon was full of pure CO2. Again, comparing it to the breath sample, which is a little bit more greenish, because there is some yellow that formed, which made it green, um, but not nearly as much carbonic acid as the pure CO2. Next up, we're going to do the exhaust, and then we'll compare all three and see how it looks to complete the data table. Okay, we just finished emptying the exhaust balloon into the sample. Uh, my kitchen now smells like a garage. Um, and if we look, kind of a similar result to what we saw with the breath sample, okay? So again, we did see a color change, um, a significant color change. Um, 
And if we compare it to the control, again, which is what it looked like before, you can see that color change definitely is an indicator that there was some carbon dioxide in there. If we compare it to the breath sample, really close, but I would say that there's a little bit more of a yellowish tint to the exhaust color as opposed to the breath sample. So that would right now all be an indicator that there's more CO2 probably in the exhaust than there was in the equal volume balloon of the breath that I, um, I put into the balloon. Uh, so next up what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some NaOH. Now NaOH is a base. And so when you add a base to this particular indicator, these solutions are gonna go back to being blue again. We're gonna try to get them back to the same color that our control was, okay? And we're gonna count the number of drops that it took to do that. So on the next video, we're gonna be having one control and then one of the other samples next to it. And I'll be adding NaOH drop-wise, and we're gonna count it and record that in our data table for part B to see how many drops of NaOH it takes to get back to being there was. Now, the less drops of NaOH added, usually, or in this case, will tell us that there was less CO2 in the sample. Okay? If it took a lot of drops of NaOH, that would indicate that there was a lot of CO2 dissolved in the sample because it formed a lot of carbonic acid. So watch for the next clip. We'll add those drops, and then we'll get that last column of your data table filled out. All right, so we're going to start with the breath samples, our first one. Now I'm wearing my gloves, handy-dandy gloves, because sodium hydroxide is a pretty caustic solution. It reacts um, with almost anything it comes into contact with, and it can cause severe burns on the skin. It's only a 0.1 molar solution, so it's not gonna to be too concentrated. All right, so now we're gonna add this dropwise until we get back to, it's back in the screen a little bit for you guys. So we're gonna add it dropwise until we get that blue color back. Now I have to swirl it every once in a while to make sure it's evenly distributed. So we go one, two, three, give that a swirl. And it looks like we're already back, okay? Um, so that took three drops. And we are already back, I would say. I'm gonna give one more swirl, just double check to make sure we're good. Yeah, I'd say we're back to our same blue color. So we gotta record that. It took three drops of NaOH added to our breath sample to get back to being at the control color again. All right, now let's take our exhaust sample. Actually, no, the next one was CO2. Let me get that one. Now, obviously, the CO2 is the most yellow of all the solutions. Again, we need to add it to get to our control, so we'll put them both in the screen again. Get some NaOH. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, I'm gonna stop there for a second. Swirl that around. Okay, we're at nine drops to get back to the pure color. Mm, actually, I don't think we're there yet. Look, it just went green on me again. So we're at nine drops, we gotta keep going. So here we go. 10, 11, 12, let's swirl it all the way around. Okay, so we're at 12. Let's give that a minute and see if it stays. Oh, still went back to green. So we're at 12, we gotta keep going. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so we added 19 total now. Give that a swirl, let it sit for a minute. Uh, I'd say we're back. That was like 19 drops of NaOH added to get back to our blue color of our control. Okay, so now we've neutralized all that carbonic acid, took 19 drops. Again, the breath took three drops the CO2 sample that was pure yellow at that point took 19 drops. Our last one that we're gonna do is the exhaust. Okay, so I'll get the control again. Here's our exhaust sample. Let's get those centered a little bit for you guys. Now, I would guess it's probably gonna be somewhere in between the two, but we're gonna give it a shot. Um, I'm gonna add four drops to kind of start out with that the gate here. So one, two, three, four. Give that a swirl. I think we're back to our color. So four drops. 
Looks like I actually might be getting a little bit lighter on this. Let me give me a second here. Yeah, so it looks like we're four drops. All right, so we're at three drops for the control, and then four drops, oh, sorry, three drops for the breath, uh, and then we were at a total of four drops for our exhaust and 19 drops for our CO2. Make sure you guys record that in your data table, um, and then you'll use all this evidence to answer your post-lab questions at the end of the experiment. Good job today, guys.